Mr. Raimi from Malaysia. And he will be assisted by Mr. Yazi, Mr. Bizi, Mr. Sufi, and Mr. Saiko. Who scores the first try for Singapore? This is a bowl semi final. Singapore will play UAE, and the other semi, China, will play Kazakhstan. Kick goes astray. to recover. Well, here's a chance down the outside for UAE. Nice ball inside too. Shaheen. Wouldn't it be great for UAE to score? We haven't seen them score a try yet in this tournament with an all Emirati team. But uh, just kicking away position there. So it's Joe Singh who takes it away. Strong tackle though from Adil. Purely legal. And uh, one of the great things about some of these young Emiratis, they seem to know no fear.
lovely take from Daniel Mark Chow. Good outside break there from Singapore. Not held, so he gets up again. Sing. Mm. Yeah, just takes his eye off the ball. Here's Kevin Liu. 13 unlucky for some, but not for Kevin Liu. Who, oh, he stretches for the line. He's held millimetres away. I think the referee's got him for holding on. Or maybe a double movement. Referee Rami. Defensive line out here for UAE. Singapore ball though. Charlie Yao gets it wide to Brian Owen. He's already scored one today and he's got too much pace on the outside for Saeed. So he goes in for a second try. Brian Ng has scored all Singapore's points so far in this tournament. Three tries. They fell to Hong Kong, 22 points to nil. Very tight game against Thailand, but just uh, getting pipped by 10 points to five. Ng has a go at the conversion himself as well. There's the play you'd want on your team, Daniel Mark Chow. We'll try it. Shame to hear that uh, Vicky Krishnan is out for the rest of the tournament with a dislocated shoulder. He played very well yesterday when he came on, particularly in the aerial clashes at line out and kickoff time. Obviously, a young player with a big future ahead of him. Saeed takes this one quickly away. Shaheen, he's never scared to run straight now. Look at him go. Only been playing rugby for six months. Oh, releases a lovely ball as well. Good to see the young fella in a bit of space. Here's another chance for UAE. They really are the underdogs of this tournament, the UAE, so... Well, the referee Rami penalises Singapore for coming round there. So UAE still in with a shot here. Saeed puts a little step on and the lovely ball. And here it is, the first try of the tournament for UAE. Well done to the Emirati team. One try from the UAE. Under the ball. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the half time for Singapore versus UAE game. Our unofficial result is Singapore 10, UAE 7.
Well, once the play starts, mate, we'll get into it. Nice game, mate. Your one or this one? Um, our one. Yeah. Our wing is going to be a bit. Our right? winger came in. Yeah. We're up 21-19. Six minutes. And our winger jammed. He should have stayed out. Yeah. So the score but 10 points to 7 Singapore over the UAE at half time in this bowl semi-final. Oh, lucky enough to be joined in the commentary position by the Philippines coach Matt Cullen aka Chook. Matt, great to have you here. Thanks for coming along. Thanks, Mike. It's uh, great to be here. So a little disappointment there for your squad in the last match. Talk us through that, Matt. Um, an extremely close game against Korea. Um, we knew that it would be a tight battle. Um, we managed to get back into the game and lead 21-19 with a minute to go. And then um, a bit of a defensive lapse. And uh, that's it. It's Sevens Rugby. And we lost in the last play of the game. So. Uh, Korea moved through and uh, we'll have to battle to, to try and uh, win fifth position now. Is that satisfying with still the shot of, a, of silverware in a sevens competition or would you rather be in with the big boys and competing for the cup? Oh definitely we proved that game that we could have we could have competed in the cup and it won't be I won't be surprised if Korea push either Hong Kong or Japan to get into a finals position. Um, now we've got to focus on beating the home team who've looked strong uh, Malaysia in that plate division. And I mean, um, to win the plate is still a, a good level of achievement in this tournament, considering it's four legs. Um, you need to be up in that sort of top five to be competing over the four legs of the Asian Men's Seven Series. So you'll be taking on Thailand in the plate semi-final. How do you prepare for a team like that? What will you be looking at? Um, Thailand do play a fairly expansive game. Uh, they, they like to throw the ball around. So we really need to concentrate on our defence and that's that's a good try there by Singapore. Yeah, Blandon Tan going over. Good diving effort from him. A big bulky centre. Uh, but uh, UAE acquitting themselves well here. They've got an all Emirati team. And uh, I don't know if you saw their try, but that was their first try of the tournament. They just scored on the cusp of half time. Nice from like Singapore. They're getting those rewards, isn't it? Oh, it's an excellent effort from UAE. They've decided to go with a heritage team here um, at the Sevens. And um, they've got to come in and, and, and play um, at, at this level is a, is a good achievement for these young men. They will improve from this, of course. And over the, you'll see over the period of the four, four legs of the Asian Seven Series that they will improve in, in each tournament. And that one trial will become five tries and ten tries and, and they'll improve, you know. So it's great to see you out here in this, in this capacity. Just reminding you, talking to Matt Cullen, who's the coach of the Philippine Seven squad. Matt, you had an injury uh, yesterday to your skipper. How did that affect the, what you were doing with the team structures and the mor morale, perhaps? Um, oh, look, whenever you, you lose a captain, obviously the, the, uh, the structures out there do, do suffer a little bit and the leadership. Um, Jake Letts, unfortunately, uh, strained or has done a great one tear of his hamstring. Um, Jake has been a captain of our Sevens team in previous years and went to the Rugby World Cup with the team in June. So his experience out there, and he plays a crucial position of halfback, um, we, we, we definitely missed his, his leadership and the experience and his pass at halfback. Um, I'm not saying that's the difference between the game, but when you lose players like that, it does affect the team. 
Um, but then again, it gives someone else an opportunity to come through and, and play. So hopefully Jake will be back in Thailand in September at 100% and we'll be back out there competing and leading the team again. We're just talking about the UAE and the way that they're going about developing their rugby beyond the expat players who are playing. Now you've got a completely different system in the Philippines. Talk us through how you develop or how you get players playing for the national team. Um, okay, so what we do is obviously we've got our Volcanoes men's and women's teams and then from there we, we have a uh, Philippine A team which is a mixture of our Volcanoes overseas based players. Um, we do have a, a number of uh, Filipinos places, uh, players based abroad. Um, they're playing in Australia and Japan at the moment because the level of the, the competition in the Philippines is just not up to the standard. Um, what we're doing in the Philippines for development then is we have our national development team which is a full local Filipino heritage team that had a series recently against the Hong Kong development team and actually won that series and they will travel internationally to either go to Malaysia and or Japan this year to play an international game. From there we identify the top five players from the development team to come into the Volcanoes camp. So we're always looking at developing in the Philippines and developing our local teams. Recently we, spent, we sent a full local under 18s team to the Chinese uh, Asian Games in Nanjing and uh, they're hopefully our next generation of under 17, under 18 players. And it's great to see UAE here. Hopefully the Philippines can do something similar in the next few years. But as I said, our top level players are currently playing in Japan and Australia to get the level of competition. A lot of your players uh, not just come from a rugby union background, but a league background as well. Uh, how do you sort of transfer those skills? And is it a challenge to get those league players to learn the fundamentals of rugby? Um, yeah, we've seen a lot of successful rugby league players, especially in the backs, um, transfer to rugby union. But this particular tournament, um, we do have a couple of league players out there, and it is quite noticeable. Um, you can do a lot of work at training with the ruck area, particularly that's where they need to learn about cleaning out and, and, and presenting the ball, unlike league where you roll the ball. Um, but then in the heat of the moment, when it comes down to playing rugby, a lot of the time the old league boys revert back to their, their, their league uh, upbringing and um, it's just playing more rugby union and getting involved but, but then again having a dynamic rugby league player who can run, step, tackle and play rugby um, is, always, is always a bonus and um, so you know, we will persist with that. The Philippines actually now has a national rugby league team that are very competitive and we, we have found a lot of r Filipinos playing rugby league. So, We'll probably see more and more league boys coming over. Um, a lot of our boys who are based in Australia have grown up playing both league and union through their school years. So, well, Just uh, in June, you have you know, the pleasure of travelling to the Rugby World Cup in Russia. Uh, you qualified in Singapore last November. Talk us through that time period. Was it, was it a surprise in your wildest dreams? Did you think you'd qualify? And, and after you did, how did you go about preparing the squad for the Rugby World Cup series? Um, it, it, was, it wasn't ex actually a surprise. We knew last year that we had a team that, that could fight and battle for third in Asia um, with, it, with, our, with our number one team in. Um, we were able to assemble that team uh, for the Singapore Sevens last year and um, we were able to call on Al Caravelli who had previously coached the USA and Argentina at Rugby World Cup level. So he brought a wealth of Sevens experience into the squad. Um, we then came together for a month before the World Cup and had uh, probably the hardest uh, training camp the Volcanoes have ever experienced under Coach Al and um, he really pushed them to the limit and, um, and then obviously going to the World Cup was just a great experience for all our players to play at that level with Australia, New Zealand, England etc. Um, so you know our players have learnt. Um, unfortunately a number of those players are playing professionally in Japan now and aren't available for this particular tournament but we're hoping to see them later in the Asian Men's 7 series to have a bit of an impact again. What is the presence of some of the Philippines players in Japan and professional setups? What does that bring to Philippines rugby when they come back? Oh, look, it definitely, you've noted on the head the, the level of professionalism. Um, we're, we're very lucky in the Philippines now to have a sponsor, Mr. Randall Carmen and HMR, who have built a, a high performance facility in the Philippines. Um, we'll be inviting clubs and other international teams to come and train at this venue but allows the Philippines to train all the national teams from under 14, under 16, right through to the men's volcanoes, to our women's, to our development teams. 
and they can train together in a, in a new high performance facility that has fields, pools, dorms. And what happens is the boys coming back from Japan and even the boys based in Australia then bring that level of prof professionalism and they bring ideas and plays and coaching techniques to that, to that genre. And um, then we try and implement it throughout the system in the Philippines there, right down to our local development uh, teams who also have a chance to train at that facility. Just reminding you of the score on this uh, bowl semi-final, it's Singapore 15, UAE 7. So a little, uh, little comfortable gap there for Singapore to go through. The next game will be China versus Kazakhstan, also a bowl semi. Talking to Matt Cullen, the Philippines coach, getting a lot of jewels of knowledge from him. Just moving to the 15s game, Matt, one of the challenges you guys have got in the Philippines is that uh, you have some amazingly talented backs, but you're always a bit left short in the forwards when you're competing in top five level. What's the plan to go about to, you know, creating a bit of bulk and size in the forward pack? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is a challenge to find players, in, especially in that type five area, who are big enough to compete with the likes of uh, Japan, Hong Kong and Korea. Um, because the Filipinos as a, as a nation of people aren't, aren't, aren't a, a big nation of people. They're, they are suited to sevens, very small, very fast. So, you know, we're, we're always on the lookout for, for front rowers and second rowers who are based somewhere playing um, rugby. Obviously, basketball is a very big game in the Philippines. Um, so they do have the height, but we're finding a lot of the young kids are, are moving towards basketball. So there's the full-time whistle of this bowl semi-final. Singapore just denied a try in the last minute. So final score, 15 points to seven. We'll be back in a minute with the bowl semi-final and more chat with Matt Cullen, the coach of the Philippine Sevens team. Singapore and UAE. Our unofficial result, Singapore 15, UAE 7. I just wait till the game starts because they cut off the, the steam and package it. Hermit, just sit under the stand. Look at the spot of the stand, please. 